So in this video, we're going to look at grayish and taupe paint colors and compare them to some popular interior finishes. Now you might not see your exact finish here, but it's taking the general idea, the undertones, and applying them to what you have in your own home. So we've got Benjamin Moore Cedar Key. This is a nice taupe. It's a taupe that leans beige. Benjamin Moore Edgecomb Gray, really awesome color. It can be taken as a taupe or a grayish because its undertones are so non-committal. Sherwin-Williams Grecian Ivory, when you compare those two, Edgecomb Gray looks a little pinkish, which is its very slight natural tendency. Yellow-green undertone. Sherwin-Williams Popular Gray, that's a nice taupe that leans to the gray end of things with the violet undertone. Sherwin-Williams Useful Gray, which is a grayish with a green undertone. And Sherwin-Williams Amazing Gray, which is a light medium grayish with a passive green undertone. So, are you ready? Let's take a look at this. This is a popular quartz countertop, something like, you know, Cambria Torque, uh, Calicata Nouveau or Calicata Maximus. Let's see, maybe move into a home like this and you're like, oh, I'm a warm color person. I'm struggling with this countertop. What might you do? What connects and what disconnects? Because just as important, important as seeing what you love is seeing what doesn't work, what you don't love. I would say this guy settled quite nicely with popular gray, but to humor the veining in there a bit more, I might want to darken it just a smidge. I don't want that backdrop color competing with the softness of the backdrop in there. Interesting. I don't dislike it from this angle. Probably a little topy on there. When I'm at this angle, it's tricky. So I try and try and step back a little bit. Let's look at a marble. I've got a couple different types of marble. A lot of people move into homes with this finish and they're not fans and they want to add some warmth. Your best bet is to say, okay, well, what's the main undertone in my marble? Often it's a violet. So that means it's probably going to naturally suit a taupe, which favors a violet undertone over a grayish, which favors a green undertone. And being a cool product, its best chance is going to be a taupe that leans gray over beige. And sometimes it won't work. Sometimes you just can't squeeze it in without sacrificing the product. Let's look at this guy too. Another marble, slightly different approach. Same result. It does not want green undertones. It really leans there. Those could be happy mediums, absolutely, even though those products generally gravitate toward a cooler look. On the other end, we've got travertine. So travertine favors, generally speaking, favors orange, a little bit of orange pink, a little bit more beigey, which means it's a little bit more likely to favor a violet undertone over a green one. But that doesn't mean to favor it doesn't mean it's just going to work because that is too cool and too light because that's lighter than this. It's a little flat compared to the more rich warmth in there. Cedar Key was definitely our best bet to satisfy a finish like this. I like it, I like it. Another warm one, see this a lot from the early 2000s, might be familiar to you. It's got a lot of variation in it. Now, the more variation your finish has in it, the more different types of neutrals, so it's not variation in one type of neutral, it's several different types of neutrals the more flexibility you're going to have long-term to squeeze it into different styles. And this is a good example of that. It might not be able to do everything. It doesn't really want to graze with the green per se. It's sitting on the edge of that. But what naturally from this arrow, it would normally be placed with a little bit more of a beige color, a tan color, depending on the finish. But you can see this tile here it actually allows some flexibility because it's tapping into that nice grayish. So while we'll never, or taupe, while we'll never get this product into the gray world, we can definitely trans transition it a bit into something softer and less tusk and warm. Definitely that one. You have to excuse when I get confused. I, I talk and I have like these other conversations going in my head of what I want to say next because I get a little excited if you couldn't tell. Okay, so you've got a tile, it's gray, and you think, oh, I want some gray as your taupe. Can I do it? Hmm, it's actually quite gray. 
So it's responding the most to the violet and popular gray, so our taupe that leans closer to gray. But what this finish is telling us, it doesn't want gray as your taupe. It wants more gray. So it's a no-go. Maybe you have a warm finish. You're like, it's cream. I have a creamy finish. Okay, do I want gray as your taupe? What's going to work? Hmm. Oof. Oh, there we go, right? So like, again, sometimes it's just like a response. You kind of go, oh, oh, I don't know what I don't, I mean, I know what I don't like about it. You might just look and go, I don't know, but I don't like it. Oh, and you might still not know why you like it, but sometimes your body reacts and go, oh, that looks better. That looks better. And over time you'll learn it's because this has the green yellow. This is a yellow green undertone. They like each other. That one, just too taupey looking in comparison. There's too much warmth and yellow in here. That's on the edge of it, but the problem is this is warmer than this, and this is lighter. I wouldn't say they're bad with each other, but this could look a little bit more yellowish in comparison. If this had a bit more depth, we'd have a better chance. But overall, I think that's a nicer combination. Maybe you have a quartz countertop or a tile, something just with a mix colors, warm neutrals in it, can you pull off graze your tote? Maybe you're not really a warm color person and you're craving something. And this finish lets you know that it doesn't want any of these, but I don't know if you can see right in there, you'd have to add some more depth, a little bit more rich warmth in the green to amazing gray. So long story short, no graze your tote for you. But if you add this one, again, this is, you know, 2005, 2010. Ooh la la. Okay, hitting some interesting spots. Definitely hitting some interesting spots, hey? Not interesting spots. So we can see there's definitely a place somewhere in between these. That might be just a touch flat, no. I think I lean. Yeah, there's just so much flexibility there. I kind of lean between those two. That's good. Flexibility is good. Maybe you have a porcelain tile. Looks like marble. Something like this. Or maybe it is marble. Can you do it? Well, I can tell you right now it is going to favor taupe that leans gray. But this is a stretch. Could you pull it off? Yes, but naturally this finish wants more gray. It would love gray with a bit more blue to it. Ooh, now let's say you have cream trim or cream cabinets. So many people have this and they really want to shift their walls to grayish, taupe, gray. And it's hard because to start, the walls will need to be darker than your cream finish, which to begin with isn't what most people are looking for. The average homeowner, the average room wants that LRV somewhere around, you know, 60 to 65. And we have to worry about the undertones because cream trim generally has the yellow undertone. You can see it sitting pretty funky with the taupe, be purple. Definitely better. But for your intentions, that's, that's not your intentions. It looks a little taupe just in comparison to the yellow in here. Useful gray, so the grays with the green is definitely the best bet. It just needs more depth, a little bit more green. And again, at some point, you're so far away from your original intentions, your original wishes, which means that at some point it's easier to save your money. Plan to paint your trim and your cabinets. So you can actually use colors you love rather than always having to accommodate something that you're not as comfortable with. Or even if you're comfortable with it, it's not comfortable with the type of wall colors you want. I know that hurts sometimes, doesn't it? Okay, quartz. A lot of quartzes have a seemingly white base, got some veining. Interesting. A little pinky perhaps, much better. I'm liking that. No, 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 no. I mean, that's not bad, but she's not doing anything for it. Whereas that one actually starts talking to it a bit more. Well, this guy. Because, you know, you can look at a product like this and go, oh, yeah, I think it's got a soft white base. Great, whatever, right? But until you actually put it with finishers, you go, oh, well, it's much softer than I thought. Maybe not quite as warm and pinky taupe as that. 
Maybe not as cool as that. Right idea though. Not grayish. Hard no. Listen to your finishes. They will tell you what they like so you don't have to think so hard. Maybe you have a beige surface with a variety of tints and tones and shades and you want grays or taupe because maybe you're not a beige fan. So a lot of people might look at useful gray there and go, okay, that's interesting because the green pops up a bit more, they contrast a bit. It, um, I'm not actually doing beige walls, awesome. But what happens is that a lot of finishes like this are 12 by 12 tiles, sometimes eight by eight. The general look of them is dated to start with. So if you contrast even slightly with them, you're actually complementing them and can make them look a bit stronger. So you're highlighting a feature that you probably don't wanna highlight which is why I would go back to our muted taupe and it's on the edge of things because this tile would like something warmer. If it had any more warmer beiges in there, hard no. Maybe you have a tile, you don't know what's shaken. And again, we're just going through a whole bunch. Hopefully you'll see something familiar and if not, you'll learn what you need to apply it to your own home. What do you think? You've brought all these paint samples home you're just not sure which one works, but you know which ones don't work now. Oh, interesting. I wouldn't have thought there's a bit of green in there, right? So this finish is telling us that it would like a very, very minor green undertone. So we would get that out of grayish over taupe. We got something like this, tile, countertop, even a fabric that has this general look to it. And maybe you like grayish, you love a green undertone. But when you put grayish with it, you realize it is a hot mess. Sitting on the edge of that there, and this is where I go, okay, so maybe from your point of view, you can see how those might connect. Then you do your research. You go, okay, I like amazing gray. So you type it into Google or Pinterest or House or whatever. You go, oh, so it's a light medium gray with a green undertone. Oh, I didn't see the green as much, but if the green's there, it could come up on the large scale. And I don't think this has much green in it. Maybe I shouldn't do it. We can see the green pop up a bit more there and how it just settles more naturally. Then you'd look these up and say, oh, those are taupes. Oh, those have a violet pink undertone. That seems to make sense for what I'm seeing here. Cool. Might be a bit flat, but I like it. I don't dislike any of these three. I probably lean there. Now, just because your finish has a lot of variety in it doesn't mean it has a ton of flexibility because if they're all colors that cater to the same undertone, you don't have a lot of room to move, you only have room to move in, in depth. So you'll find your most flexible products have, you know, they'll have gray and grayish and taupe and cream or a mix of a few of those in there. That's where you get flexibility from. You look at a product like this, it has a lot of stuff going on, but it all commits to more of a taupe, violet pink undertone compared to green. I mean, look at, see how that green yellow really makes that pink come up. That's so Love it. Another one that's got a little mix of colors, but this one has, let's see if I can get it right up there for you. It's got some warm gray, it's got some beige, it's got a little bit, of, a little bit of love going on in there, which means we're gonna have some flexibility. Yes, yes, heck yes. Oh no. Oh, interesting. Not bad, but definitely better. But even hit a little edge of that too, I like it. What have I got here? We'll finish off this pile and then we're all done. Maybe you have a solid gray surface. You're thinking, oh, well, it's gray. I can probably do whatever I want. But remember, gray will have blue, violet, or green undertones. If it has green undertones, it's probably gonna like grayish. If it has violet undertones, it's probably gonna like this. If it has blue undertones, it might not like either. Let's see, that's a little warm. A little warm looks a little too pinky in comparison. Much better, the violet's connecting more there. <laughs> no, nope, nope. Our best bet was there and I think you could pull that off, but I'd love to see a little bit more gray, more of a warm gray with a violet undertone would be nice. Now, what if you have a finish and you don't like the undertone? So you've got this, it's got a taupe, but it's got a really strong pink in it. So you think, well, I'm gonna do the opposite of it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna enhance it. I don't wanna do more pink. I wanna add green and add some balance or you cancel it out. But 
opposites can attract, make each other stronger. So whereas this starts out just looking pinkish, but simple, it can sometimes pop a little bit more in comparison to an opposite. Whereas as soon as you put it with a warm one, that's maybe a bit flat, touch warm, but close. Awesome. It belongs. And sometimes if you're going to live with a finish, it's about embracing it and accepting it rather than fighting it. As soon as you fight it, you do risk enhancing it. So if you got to live with it, it may as well look its very best. And for a finish like this, it's very best sits right there. And that is about listening to your home. Maybe you have a little countertop, maybe it's laminate, quartz, real marble. You want something a little soft. You want to know if you can do violet or green undertones. Green's not bad. Violet's definitely better. Maybe a little bit less, a little bit more gray. Countertops like these were hot in the late 90s, early 2000s, the ones that look like granite. This one has a particular undertone we're going to find out, but there's like butter rum granite. There's some really rich warm ones. Let's see. So sometimes you look at colors, you go, okay, I don't mind that. That's okay. And that's where you have to make the mistake of choosing it because it's okay. It's not great. Cause then all of a sudden you go like this and go, oh, oh, okay. Now I'm seeing some actual color connections. Cause while these were okay, I, they weren't bad. They weren't a super hot mess. Maybe that one is, um, they, these ones are talking to each other, right? It's saying, oh, thank you. I just wanted some green in there. Maybe a bit more warmth than this, maybe a little less warmth than this, but it told us what it wants. Nice warm finish. Maybe that's kind of like a travertine you have. Let's see. So it is really liking those taupe undertones and it doesn't want green. You know, that's not a bad combo, but again, if this is on a dated looking surface, like a 12 by 12 tile, uh, you could be making it look more dated. Nice. So say you have a dark, dark charcoal tile, a really dark, almost black countertop or dark fabric. And you don't know if you want gray as your taupe. So maybe you can see which undertones it's gravitating towards the most. Definitely a violet undertone. Here's a travertine that's a bit different. So it comes back to flexibility. So when you have a travertine like this one, minimal variation, really consistent undertones, more or less, it's going to be more limited. And it's not gonna, not really gonna love a heck of a lot. That's the closest, but it's still no scream and glory. Whereas this one still has some of those beige tones in it, but it also has a reasonably strong gray violet. That gray violet's going to give some flexibility, a little bit more movement, it's a little flat looking, but a little warm. See how it looks a bit better with that tile versus that one. So it depends on how much you had of each. It actually would just like a little bit more depth and maybe even a little bit more violet. And it really, it doesn't want green. And I, we looked at that fella. We've got two more. It's a nice tile and you're thinking, yeah, I want grayish walls. What happens when we put it with taupe? What happens when we put it with grayish? Nauseating. That one's not as nauseating. This one's just, oh my God. Doable. No, it's not doable. This works. That's what it wants. A nice taupe leaning into gray. That is the undertones it favors. Lastly, maybe you have concrete floor or countertop tile or a fabric that says general color. What do you think? Hmm. It's not fighting these greens terribly, but it's just not looking good. And that's again, that problem where you go, oh, no, that works. It's okay. Without knowing that this is so much better. So you want to bring home that nice range of colors. Take your time. Yeah, definitely settles best right there. 
So there you go. Bring home samples, compare them. Even if you have to paint a bigger sample on your wall to really get a feel for it, take your time, figure out which undertones, which colors your finishes like the most.